Which is more accurate, wrist-based or chest strap heart rate? Today we're going to put Ntutu to the test and figure out which of these two measuring techniques is more accurate. So let's get started. So let's talk about what is actually being measured. When we talk about the chest strap, what's actually happening is there are electrodes built into that chest strap that is measuring electrical current or an electrical impulse. Now see the heart as an electrical pump. Every time there is a polarization and depolarization of the heart, so contracting and relaxing of the heart to pump blood around the body, there is an electrical impulse being sent. The chest strap has the ability with those electrodes to pick up on that electrical current and that is what's reading the heart rate. So this is a primary measure as the electrode sits right above the heart, it's a primary measure of what is actually happening in the heart. When we talk about the wrist base units, it is a small LED light at the back of your watch that sits on your wrist. Now, what's actually happening there is that is a secondary measurement. It is blood being pumped around your body, so through the veins and through blood vessels. Firstly, keep in mind that there's quite a distance between your wrist, for example, and where your heart actually sits. So there's always gonna be a slight lag. Blood pressure is gonna take it, have an effect on this as well. So that LED light behind your watch is actually sending a little light into the skin or through those blood vessels and then waiting for some sort of reflection and what current or what's coming out from that light through those blood vessels. So what's actually happening here is it's then relying, as I said, measuring almost a pulse rate, if you wanna call it that, blood pumping or moving through the blood vessels underneath that light. There are a couple of things we can do to try and make the measurements a little bit more accurate. Now this goes both ways. Let's talk again, chest strap first. When we're using that chest strap, you wanna make sure the chest strap is sitting tightly, so a nice firm snug fit, not moving up and down. If you're a female and you run with a bra or a sports bra on, it's usually advised that you are tucking that belt underneath your sports bra. It's also important that you do just wet the electrodes. So whether it's a little bit of saliva, whether it's some water, some sweat, just wet the electrodes before putting it on. It does just help with that conductivity. So that's the chest strap, making sure it is as accurate as it can read. The wrist unit, there are a lot more factors that affect its accuracy. One, we generally recommend you'll see on your wrist is a little bony notch. You wanna try and make sure that your wrist watch is sitting below that bony notch, so more towards the elbow side. You wanna make sure that your wristwatch is tight, so that's important. However, just there needs to be a little caveat here, you can't go too tight. Remember, as I mentioned, it is measuring blood pumping through the veins. So the minute you constrict that too much and you make that wristwatch too tight, you're stopping blood flow through the veins. You wanna get away from anything that could interfere with the LED signal through the skin. So shaving your arm might be beneficial, so that way you've got no hair or anything that could interfere with that. Sweat, moisture, those sort of things do interfere, so relatively dry surfaces, trying to dry those surfaces quite often. It obviously becomes that much more difficult in those long runs. You can understand it's more difficult to keep drying the surface of your skin the whole time with the sweat. Sometimes in humid environments, that's almost just not an option. So moisture, Lotions are things that can interfere as well. So try, if you are using hand cream, skin cream, try not put lotion or sunscreen even for that matter underneath the surface of that LED light where it is going to be reading. So those are just a couple of things that you should consider when you are wearing, whether it is your wrist unit or your chest strap, to try and get the most accurate readings your device can give. Okay, so let's talk about the test we've actually gotten to, to doing. We've decided we're gonna keep things quite extreme. So what I mean by that is the easy run, we've gotten to just starting at an eight kilometers an hour. Now, let's just put this in context, for a Ntutu, eight kilometers an hour is really easy. So we've got him running at an easy, steady state at a pegged eight kilometers an hour for a 10 minute block. So that should get steady state. We're expecting to see his heart rate steady off, nice and level on a graph and keep nice and consistent. From the 10 minute mark, we are going to then kick him up to run intervals. So we're getting him to run a two minute interval at 15 kilometers an hour. So again, not a max effort for Ntutu, 
but it definitely is pushing him a little bit outside of a comfort zone. So two minute intervals at 15 kilometers an hour with a one minute recovery back down to eight kilometers an hour. So that'll be a nice easy recovery for a minute and he's gonna do four repetitions. So two minutes on, one minute easy, four times with a small cool down to finish that off. So I'm done with the test and we've got the data back. So let's do a quick deep dive into what it, what it looks like. But the first thing I must point out is that this is just one test, it's me um, on my own in a controlled environment um, testing two devices but it's not a scientific test by any means um, you'd need a much larger sample size to be able to tell if these things are significant but it is quite interesting just to see because as an athlete i might just be it's just going to be me on the road so for the first part of the test i did a steady steady um, run for 10 minutes at eight kilometers an hour and what's interesting here is that both devices actually track quite close to each other so on this graph as you can see there are two two different colored blocks. The red line um, is the wrist-based sensor, which was the Garmin Phoenix 7, and the gray block is um, the chest strap, the HRM Garmin um, strap connected to the Garmin 400 255. So what we see here is that in the first 10 minutes, the two devices actually track pretty close to one another. But actually one of the things that we do know is wrist-based devices are able, as long as there's not many drastic changes in terrain or intensity, they can actually um, track quite accurately to within 2% of um, the chest straps. There is a little bit of a lag um, when the timing starts. You can see the red line takes a little bit of time to just pick up, but once it does, it stays pretty much constant. There are a little few changes here and there where it's different, but overall, you wouldn't be able to tell the difference between these two, these two devices. The interesting part comes once we get to the interval. So uh, as Devin said, I did four by two minutes at 15 kilometers per hour, which for me is around 5K pace at this moment in time and that was followed with a one minute recovery in between. So when you do 5K based intervals, this is faster than threshold, what we should see in a normal graph is that your heart rate will keep rising throughout the test. Even with the recovery, the next interval should be a little bit higher um, than the next one, and that should, you should see that rise throughout the session. So if you look at the first interval, both devices pick up, again, a slight lag with the wrist, but it gets to the same level. And then towards the end of the interval, both devices show a weird artifact. There's a, you can see a gray spike, at the same time, there's a huge red bump where the wrist also picks up. And I'm not sure what happened here because this was a very controlled test. I was on the treadmill, um, so I didn't accelerate. I didn't do anything. Maybe I was still at the, at the same time talking to Devlin because he was uh, manipulating the treadmill. So perhaps um, there was some distraction there. But interesting thing here is that the chest strap recovers very quickly back to where it should be, where it is at the moment, not where it should be. But the wrist-based um, sensor remains high and then once I reach the recovery bit um, starts to slow down. Both devices get to around the same level in the recovery and here we start seeing something interesting. In the second interval there is a massive massive lag between the wrist based sensor and the chest strap in getting to a peak. The peak shouldn't be gradual like this at this intensity but it does take time to build up and only towards the end of the interval do you see the wrist based sensor catch up to the heart rate um, to the chest strap and then it continues to rise even more. And then there is a lag um, following into the recovery. So it seems to be now um, lagging, picking up the rise in intensity, and then also picking up um, the recovery. But it's just a shift. So it's not as if it's measuring ex like um, significantly higher, it's just shifted where it's measuring. But this might be important if you're trying to control a session and you're using the heart rate um, rise and fall to control how you're doing the, your intervals. Because if, if you're seeing a lag and picking up, you might think, oh, I'm under the right intensity. So you might try and push a little bit harder to get the right intensity. Um, in the third interval, um, surprisingly, they both track the same, but again, there's still that lag at the end where the wrist-based sensor seems to delay in picking up that I've slowed down and gone back to the recovery pace. And then again, that, that, that lag just, just remains throughout. Um, as I said, one of the things that you should see with a test like this is that with each interval, the heart rate should go slightly higher each time because of the intensity that I'm running at. And with, with um, the wrist-based sensor, the first and the fourth interval reached a higher peak than the second and the third interval, which is a little bit, a little bit strange. But overall, it's interesting that these two devices, even though you can see some differences, to the casual observer, are actually very close to each other. So it might be okay casually to use as a training tool. But what is interesting here is that because of the lag in picking up um, the change in intensity, when you run easy runs and you're running on hills, um, 
you might start to see some of these artifacts come through. So these devices track an incredible amount of, amount of matrix and data, but not all of them are 100% accurate or valid. One of those is VO2 Max, and this video here will show you why your VO2 Max on your watch is wrong. 